Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. Gerd Muller, Filippo Inzaghi, Jim Melrose, Gabriel Batistuta, Marco Van Basten, Cole Leeburn. The number nine in football is synonymous with success, but today at Dorky Wanderers, the target is 10. 10 wins in a row, on the bounce, not out. Dorking's run of victories has seen them float to the top of the National League South, a run that began back in December. The second win of the nine was against today's opponents, Oxford City, as the Wanderers scored four on the road. City are a team who are yet to lose away from home, and they too are looking up and not down, as they dream of making it to step one of the football pyramid. Dorking, however, have done their homework. Although in commentator Gary Pascoe's case, that just means he's written the opposition names down incorrectly in advance. And let's face it, the Dorking players too. Oxford may have changed their manager since the last meeting between the clubs, but Mark knows exactly what to expect from his opponents. And he's not the only one who is well prepared. As such, it's about time we formally introduced you to Mitchell Elliott, the kits manager. Yeah, Martin, uh wasn't well a few months ago and uh, I got asked to take over for a bit. I, uh, I'll make sure, I, I think I check things like three or four times before I uh, give them out. <laughs> like if I mess something up, I know that it'll probably be the end. <laughs> uh, I've put out shirts, shorts, socks, warm up tops, and then I've been keeping the uh, player tech vests, been washing them, putting them out. Uh, fill up the water bottles, um, make sure there's water in here for them. Uh, then I'll get all the keeper, keeper balls, cones, get all the management team sort of stuff ready as well. Uh, some of them you just let them get on with it and they just say, like say a passing hello. Like some of them are really good to me, some of them just obviously just get on with what they've got to do. Uh, when I'm not here is uh, I'm at the academy here as well, which I do college as well, so I try and weigh this up with college and uh, try and do this at the same time. Long term I want to see if I can do this, uh, long term, because I love it here, like doing this. This is like I said to myself, there's no other job in football, this is the one I want to do because you're involved in it and I love, like doing it all. So. There's a buzz in the air as Mitch and the rest of the volunteers prepare for the Tuesday night game under the floodlights, and perhaps even a hint of tension, at least outside of the playing squad, for within, Mark and his side are focused on their opponents. Right boys, cheers lads, be as attentive as you can. Um, Bobby, won't need that mate. Right. <laughs> Good, good. Okay, so uh, what are bullet points we're working towards, yeah? So, who's that? Oh yeah, what's fucking Dan Lincoln? Primary, not one of your warm-ups, is he on? <laughs> fucking military style, fucking pre-match warm-up. Oh, right, Dan. You're playing that well, mate. With a start when you're fucking ready. I don't mind that. <laughs> so I keep hitting you with the same information. So it's important you listen, yeah? And it's about making sure our standards are really fucking high because what winners do is when things are going well, they do more. They do more. They work harder, train harder, play harder, right? And we're on a great run. We're on a great run, but we know we have to up the ante. We're not going into this match thinking, can we be as good as we were Saturday or the last game? We're going into the match thinking, can this be our best performance of the season? the most complete performance of the season, right? Now, the thing we've got in our favour is, and it's a really big head start, is we are fit as fuck at the moment. As a unit, we are drilled, we are fit. So the one thing we're gonna bring, and that's what we've done at Billericay, we just had the agility and the sharpness on the first half, whilst it was tight, to essentially stay in the game like you need to do. Whose phone is that? Sammy? He's, to, he's, to, he's, he's fucking, he's gone down the route of he's got no mates. What's the chance of it ringing? <laughs> Is it one of those domino things? <laughs> 7 99 all of before eight. Um, so, like, so we've got this fitness thing in our favour. But what I, I do look around and, and see, so like, I thought Old Acre Saturday was best game he's had for us. I look around at, the things you're learning in that role, the way he pressed, the way he was tenacious. 
So, so many things we're doing really fucking well, yeah? We have to keep doing them. Must be relentless. I don't mind if one goes off your shin. I don't give a fuck if they get three goals off their ass and we lose three nil. Genuinely, as long as all the controller balls, being ready for the game, working our tits off, getting the instructions as good as we can, are there. As long as they're there, I'm fine. They play three, four, one, two, okay? They've not changed it all season. But let's just put ourselves in, in, the, in a manager's, you know, mindset. They always play this formation. They've not changed it all season. But they're playing a team that has scored, what, 25 goals or something in four games or something stupid, right? So they might go 4-2-3-1. If they do, it's a full press. So we've got to go around the outside really quickly. If I thought they was playing 4-2-3-1, I'll play off from the start. But I don't think they're going to. So I'm going to gamble on the fact they're playing a back three because they've played it all season, right? Because in my head, I'm thinking they've got to win Saturday in that formation. They're thinking Dorking are absolutely rattling teams. And they're also thinking we've beaten 4-2. So there is a chance they might play a flat back four away from home as well. They're unbeaten away from home. But because they're unbeaten, because they might consider a point a good result today, because we've scored goals and because we've beaten fours and fives, they might just go to a back four. So if they are, we need to go fucking quickly to beat the first press. But I'm going to say, even though I think there's a lot of reasons to play a back four, they'll play that way, the way they played at their place, OK? Tune in. So remember, it's a back three marking two off the ball. This boy's playing again now, come off the bench against us. This Zach, whatever his name is, what's his name, McCreckrin? Right. He set up all three of their goals Saturday, okay? Wants space, and with space, he's dangerous. He is a good player. So, DJ, that is your job. When he tries down in to get the ball, just do it down at Billericke and just fucking let him know he's playing a proper player. So, it should be 3 5 2 versus 3 5 2. Use two, make sure you deal with their overload, and press the keeper. We can keep using these words like relentless and ruthless and that, and, and, and they, they do still count. But you've got to really fucking buy into that. You've got to really think, I want to take people's eyes out. You've got to really think, we are going to leave everything out here. And if you lot can go at the pace we can, then good luck, pal. That's what you've got to think, right? That's how you have to approach these games. OK, boys, let's make sure we come back in tonight. Another one, another notch, another good home win, OK? Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, massively, yeah. So you've got two ways of doing it. Uh, one is that you keep, you know, um, moving the team around a little bit and, and keeping it fresh or, you know, obviously not everyone's got a luxury of doing that. Uh, or two is just do, do a good job of reminding them, you know, how they're feeling after each match, why they're feeling that way, the approach they're taking to each game. You know, the sort of, um, the dynamics of a team they reckon it's really hard for a team to storm, as they call it, all the time. You know, it's like you form it, you perform, you know, and then you sort of storm, if you like, and you have that spell. Um, and, um, yeah, we're having that spell. We've probably overstayed our welcome in that spell. The most important thing is saying to them, look, get beat any which way you want, but not on effort and work rate. Do you know what I mean? Let's make sure we don't have a complacent day. Because you are going to be, they might have a, they might play out of their skin, they might have one go off the arse. So you're going to get beat at some point. But for me, it's just about that mindset of whatever you do, don't get beat on what you control, which is your, you know, your work rate and tenacity. That's the message really at the moment. But, um, you know, bottom line is like nine, nine wins out of nine in any division takes some doing. Do you know what I mean? They've got a new manager, um, they've got a great result Saturday. Uh, one of those results that's going to give them a big lift. I didn't want to tell the boys too much about that, but, you know, when I watched the video, they're all in the crowd, they're all on top of each other, big relief. They've got a 3-1, scored three goals the last five minutes. That, that does a lot for teams. We've all been there. Um, you know, their dynamic from their point of view is they're third. Even after not a great spell, they're third. They're um, unbeaten away from home. You know, they, uh, they probably think a point's a good result tonight, so against a team that scored a lot of goals on a good run, how would you feel going to Dawkins Wanderers? Nine straight wins, scoring goals for fun, away from home, you're going to go, you know, you're going to play the way you normally do, back three, or you're going to go to a back four, so that'll be interesting. Um, we've planned for a back three. 
them to be a back three. They've been a back four, would have picked a different team probably. But we'll just adjust if we need to. Yeah, I mean, when I started coming to Dorking Wanderers, after four or five games, they had a fans forum up in the um, supporters bar. I went along, I put my hand up, asked a couple of questions. Um, Mark and some of the volunteers answered some questions. That was just things I was interested in because I wanted to understand the background. Didn't think much more of it. Went to the next game and Mark remembered my name and I was like, you remember my name just from putting my hand up at one meeting? And I thought, this is, this is crazy. At Crystal Palace, if I'm at a Premier League game, you, you, just, you, you come, you go, 25,000 people, you're just a number. You know, you don't you don't particularly stand out. Whereas at a local non-league football club, they know all the regular supporters. At non-league level, when I'm watching Dorking, you can see that the players actually, you know, it's their it's their spare time. They've all got jobs, but they're going out of their way to actually try and make it as footballers to to do it all for the team. And yeah, I think they care. And I think the fans are a lot more supportive in non-league. You almost never hear booing at, at non-league football. You know, the, the fans feel connected to the players a lot more, a lot more supportive. And I think that's a lot more what a supporter should be about. If it's anything like the game away at Oxford, um, Mark will just go out and just attack them from the start. Um, so I hope we win. I hope it's, uh, you know, another win. Ten in a row would be just unbelievable. Oxford City's team sheet is in, and as Mark suspected, but bet against, Oxford manager Justin Merritt has gone for a back four for the first time this season. They've gone for the old check mate, been clever, they, he's done it. He's done the right thing. He's plugged us mate, he's plugged us, he's put three up, three pace, back three. So we're going to have to, yeah, basically four, five, one. So he's, he's full press on our back three, he's got a really quick lad up against Cheadle. Yeah, and obviously, we ain't going to be able to play out, and obviously I've left Dots out. So if I'd have known you were doing that, I'd have played Dots. Did you change team now? No, not allowed to. But, just mean, no, just means we're going to have to be smart. And as if the Oxford formation wasn't enough to worry about, the players have been given the wrong socks. Are they the ones we had Saturday? Ah, we wore the yellow. Is it all of them, or? Yeah. Yeah, they're not. Look at them, they're looking so Well, I'll get on it. They're saying all these socks are shit, they're the wrong ones. Yeah, they've got they've got none of the proper ones. Yeah. Yeah, but they like they they're saying we have thirty. Yeah, yeah. Let me go and have a look in the. Yeah, and just room. fucking Mitchell. Do you want to go have a look at him? Yeah, yeah. Go have a look. You know what the footballs are like. Sorted. Don't worry. He's done the right thing, but you can't. You know what I mean? All the odd, all the facts said he'd do it. We beat him at their place. We're scoring goals. All the facts said, look, he's going to do that. Yeah. I just wanted to show him in case they were happy with him. The only thing there you go. Is they just don't have the top bit. White on top. Yeah, as long as you're happy with it. Well done, lads. Right, you're staying out, yeah? It's a, it kind of, you know, they play it in a defensive way. Might not be a bad thing, so we'll see. Well, they've just put, they've got a few dangerous matchups. They put a really good lad on Cheadle. They, 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 he's done the right thing. He's done exactly what I would have done if I was him. The only reason I didn't think he would is because they've not played it all season. And he, he had even done it once before, I thought they'll do that. But So we'll see. We can't really go into detail too much on it because otherwise the players are getting in their heads that this is a difficult task and it's not. So it's just making sure it's just minor adjustments but I'll try and get into their heads that this change is going to be a bit alien to them even though I think it's a good move. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Foggy's going uh, back into centre mid, okay? All right, they're playing a, they're playing what looks like a 4-5-1. If for whatever reason they're not playing a 4-5-1 then we'll swap it back round, okay? So I think they're playing a full press 4-5-1. So the big advantage to us is they've not played it all season. And straight away they're thinking about how to stop this machine. So I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that, right? That's just mean we need to be a little bit switched on with regards to the playing out part, because it's a full press. <coughs> so we'll have to be clever. We've got players that are fitter, faster and stronger. If we're playing out, it's a full press. Okay, look, DJ, that'd be the same player. Okay, I think it'll be a double pivot. They might have it the other way around, I don't know. Right? 
I reckon it's a double pivot. Could be like that, I don't know. It's a full press. So now, it's speed of movement. What we can't afford is, Baz, can't afford you and Cheadle to be turning the back on it, walking out. There's only one outcome, full press, we've got to go long. It's a bit like I said Saturday, if we can play, then we need to play, okay? So you boys need to get width, and all you're looking for is someone to be a bit tucked in. If you think the press is so good we can't play, you do that if we're struggling to play out. Because if you do it too early, they, they start to pass you on. If you think we're struggling to play out, you do that, okay? Simple, right? Must win the battles, must win the battles, okay? Clear lines we need to. Okay, boys, let's go. Go on, boys. Woo -woo. Evening, boys. Meet again. Let's yeah. Take us. Is this your last evening game? No, I think we've only got one more after this all season. Every Saturday, then after. Yeah, it's fucking gets easy, then, doesn't yeah. it? Do you know what? Just to confuse it even more, I played a diamond the other day. You have to focus on the shape, Carl. Carl. Just to confuse it even more, he played. He played a fucking diamond the other year. So, didn't they? That's good though, because Mac is there, isn't he? So that's fine. Just got to get that formation really quick today. Dorking know Oxford are employing a back four, but they don't know what the midfield system will be, and subsequently, which Dorking player should be pressing which City player. Second. Get us up, then. Get us up, buzz up. Alpha! As Oxford start to push up the pitch, the players have to figure out who to pick up, while Carl and Dino work on the Oxford shape. Back four, mate, it's 22 in two. He cuts right in, he goes wide, two, three, one, that couldn't change the 10. Okay. Just, just settle into that for five minutes, yeah, yeah, Carl. Yeah. Just be sure, yeah? yeah. It looked like a three at the beginning. Oxford are playing a 4-3-3 formation, which means the Dorking back line will be under pressure. Still, Oxford are not pressing high up the pitch, and the home side is struggling to get their game going. Patience, patience! Round the corner, Alfie! Alfie, spin him, spin him! Get up! Time, man on now, man on now! Baza, get across, open your body. Baza! A neat flick from Nana Awusu and a return from Elliot Benyon exploits the space down Dorking's left. And while Oxford don't make the most of it, Wanderers have been warned. Baz! Baz, Brixie, keep him fucking working. Keep him going that way. Don't let his fucker close space down. Keep him that way. No! A misplaced crossfield ball from Jordan Cheadle inevitably riles the Dorking bench and they're keen to calm their side after a nervous opening five minutes. Press! 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 Brilliant well, DJ. DJ Baz, I tell him to play around the back. It's not on. Put it to Niall! Ed, Ed, get Jordan and Long, settle down on the ball. Calm, calm. Beardy's advice is taken on board and Wanderers begin to find their rhythm. Briggsy! Briggsy! Baz, a wider, mate, wider, wider, not deeper, wider. Can we give Briggsy a run? There, Josh Tadiston, Josh Tadiston. Someone on, needs to come on. short. DJ's on, DJ. Give it to DJ. Now, spin. Alfie! Man on! Other side. City are keeping the middle of the park compact and Wanderers are heading outside. It's a pump, Josh! Josh! Get up! The back four's dropping off, there's not much space. No. And to be fair, there, there is a, you know, there's a diagonal, he's a fucking full back a minute ago, he's tapped at centre half. Yeah. When, when Cheadle's got it. Get Briggs on the ball as well, 1v1. Yeah, I think get, we will. Get into his free open up. DJ Oldacre's free kick isn't properly cleared, and Dorking had the first opening of the match. Oh, puta madre. Man, you got Chewies? Lucky Chewy, we're going to score, eh? That nine, nine's Mark and Jordan, look at him. City are pegged back by a series of set plays, leading to the game's first talking point. He's off. Offside. Yes! Offside! He's, in there. He's offside! He's offside! He's offside! The first one. 
off of Baz that he put it up straight away. An oddly objective Dino is right. Alfie Rutherford's effort to attack the ball from an offside position affected the game and Oxford get away with the debacle in their box. You want to be around that ref, man? Look, he's, he ain't sure. You want to get around the fucking ref, man? You lost your be up there. He ain't even sure. You're headed back in. Alfie didn't touch it. Would... Offside. We, if, we, if there's ten of us round there, we've got more of a chance than no fucker. The goal is disallowed, but Oxford will be concerned that Dorking have woken up. 1v1. Go on, one, go on. Slip him in. up! Ah, I'm out of a touch, Briggs. Unlucky. Well played! Well played! With an undefeated record away from home, City clearly know how to defend, and Dorking's onslaught of throw-ins and crosses is hitting a big green wall. Hold it! Different class, Alfie. Slip him in. Get in the box! Round the back, Briggsy! That third man run from Foggy, he's fucking got them all over the place. Yeah. They just left Alfie and all went with Foggy. Good football, Alfie! Well done! Go on, go on, go on! Although both teams are battling hard, it's about time Matt Briggs danced his way through the Oxford defence. Go on, you're in, Sam! Go on! Left foot, boss. Briggs did receive a push, but he stayed on his feet, and the ref instead gives a foul for Reese Fleet's trip on Old Acre. That is definitely not the first time I've said that line. This is goal anyway, DJ. If he goes down, he gets a foul, Briggs. But why does he have to go down? That's he what he doesn't have to, he shouldn't have to. Yeah, bollocks. Maybe not, and maybe they're disappointed because it's a free kick, and nobody scores free kicks on Dorking Uncovered, do they? Darren Oldacre curls his foot around the ball and it drops inside the foot of the post, much to goalkeeper Ben Dudzinski's cost. Go again! Rather than collapse in disappointment, Oxford rally and they exert their first real spell of pressure. Someone has to go help him. Stop the cross! Stop the cross! That stand up! Stand up! There's a nick! Nick it! Briggs Z! Ah! Open your body! Great to head that is Cheadle. Cheadle. Go on, Go on Briggsy, get on! The spell doesn't last and Dorking is soon back up the other end looking for a second. Great ball that is. Oh, too much whip. Shots off, Alf. Deliver! Round the back, round the back! Oh! What's the runner? Runners, Briggsy! Runners. Briggsy! Tight! Briggsy, go for it! Foot in! Old Acre is forced to accept a yellow card in order to break Oxford's counter down. Although it's the Oxford players who should be booked for being silly enough to think that tossing the ball in Ed Harris's direction would work in their favour. Love that, Ed. There we go, can we nick Tighter, it? Tighter, boys. Get up again! Go on, Briggsy! Go on, Briggsy! Go on, Briggsy! 2v1! Fucking take him on. Take him on! Take him on. Shift shoot. We're showing you inside. Mark's considering going four at the back to counter Oxford's shape, but he's unsure whether to make the change. You know what I mean? So it's one of those like in the balance jobs because obviously a bat four is great against the way they're playing. We'd have an overload, they'd have yeah. an overload, but they don't want to bomb it anyway. Yeah. But the thing is, obviously, at the moment, in possession, we've got chances. Tight, Buzz! Tight, Buzz! That's a centre midfielder run off there. Yeah, Josh wasn't marking his man there. Oh, pretty. Josh, switch on! Don't fucking switch on! You can't leave Spur in there, you're fucking next to him! To the four. I'm going to say you're coming off for no reason other than tactical, okay? So well done, Alf. 
okay? Has to straight swap at the moment, and then we're gonna slide into a back four pretty quick if we need to, okay? Well done. They're so deep, there's no channel to run into, is there? There's none at all. So the target man's a better option than the round the corner ball, which Otz will give us. And then any balls in the box, Otz is gonna get on the end of it as well. I think it's important we don't, you know, rush what we're doing. I think the best stuff we've created has been when we've took our time with it, to be honest. Because they want the ball, so they can just turn the ball back on us, don't they? That's what they want. I think another goal will definitely deflate the way they're playing. They're playing on high oxygen at the moment, yeah? But all of it is pump, it's all pump and grind. It's the keeper fucking whizzing the ball. It's long stuff. It's can we get a throw, can we get a corner? If we're playing forward and it's closed off, Ott's feet, because Alpha Tate ain't a sausage behind them. And what that should do, if Ott's tries to pin him a bit more feet, then you might have more of a chance of that one in behind, Josh. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? But we'll just set that and then we'll do the seconds. Okay? So, brilliant defending. Keep it up. Great first half performance against a formation we didn't prepare for, but we've outratted them. And they're lucky really to still be in the game in the manner they are at the moment because we've had a lot of last for a penalty box action. So can we be patient enough now, play with your chests out like we're the home team, going towards the fans in control, get your man Ox balls in the box, he'll kill it for you. Okay, let's go, come on. <laughs> Alf, cheers mate. Right. Yeah, really good now. Damn, brilliant there mate. I just, yeah, I just got to go my gut feeling on that one. I just feel like the way the game is, it's rough and tumble. We need extra height, we need extra height and the ball's in the box. I think Ottawa would be a lot stronger than Alf. They're deep, they're aggressive and they're deep. And what I didn't want to do was put, take off one of the midfielders now and then leave Alfie and Otts on because, um, you know what I mean, then we'd be in trouble going to the back four. So I've done it in thinking in mind with um, taking off Old Acre and putting Sammy on. Let's go H. Dorking start the half as if they're Charlton Athletic playing at Upton Park in October 86. And like West Ham, Oxford are not ready for it. Well not, dog. Hell of a touch, Maka. Oh, no. Sadly, Nar McManus is no Jim Melrose and his effort squirms wide of Dudzinski's goal. Maka loved that! With Alfie Rutherford unable to find any space, Mark has introduced new signing Harry Ottaway. He's been brought in to cover the loss of Jason Pryor, and the big man up front is eager to impress. Go on, Harry. Harry, great pressure. Oxford are going longer than my friend Ed's best man speech, which clocked in at an astonishing 23 minutes. But every now and then, the tactic pays off, unlike Ed's best man speech, which didn't have a punchline. That's free kick probably wouldn't make the cut in many other episodes, and we ought to explain why. There's a certain satellite broadcaster that this narrator once worked for, where honesty was not their policy when it came to the quality of their content. Indeed, some fake crowd noise and overzealous commentary might be required for this game. But we work there no more, so let's be clear. This game is really, really boring. It's, yeah, it's just basically Josh. Wes, yes, and now on the left go. Oh, Follow-ups. Handball! That's handball, ref! We really wish it was handball. But the most interesting thing to happen now is that Mark switches to four at the back, and that kills the game. Good decision-making. Listen, they are ratting, so I wouldn't relax too much that they're ratting, OK? Cheetah nearly got caught twice. Ah, uh, yep, sorry, George Harmon hit the post. Uh, totally forgot about that one, and that was mildly entertaining. Oh, and yes, there is this bit where Niall McManus slips and Zico Acer innocently falls over him, only to get booked because Dorkin react as if they've just seen Piers Morgan walk into the ground. Fucking hell, man! Sammy, make sure they know we've got an overload now. 
We've got an overload. Make sure they know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full backs high. Buzz! Here we go again, long term viewers. Buzz! Buzz! Superb, mate. Buzz! 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 Oh, what a header that is. <clears throat> yeah. Back stick! Oh, hike stop. That bit stayed in because we like Harry and Dino called him H-Dog, which is a cool name. All we really want is to get towards the end because Dorking are 1-0 up and they're minutes away from winning their 10th game in a row unless Oxford can ruin the party. That's when things get tense. Oxford forward Zach McEachran knows we need some highlights and God damn it, he's doing his best. The problem is we've got to be on the ball here. We've got to be on the ball. Buzz! Buzz! Barry! Buzz! Buzz! This bit's staying in the edit because we set up kit man Mitch at the beginning and his three beat story arc ends with him showing you that he also holds up the substitute board. This really is some good storytelling. No, uh, Maka. In case you didn't believe us, this one is indicative of the clips that we've taken out. Problem is, the issue is there. The issue is, for the game, you're saying, right, obviously what we've not done is said, well, if they go, if we've matched it up, then we've got an overload. So when we do that, should have said it half-time. They should do, but they haven't, yeah, haven't worked it out. The bloke's splitting him. Mark's point is that now Dorking have four defenders, they and Oxford have the same overload or in simpler terms, a player in space. But the Dorking players haven't spotted it and we couldn't find any clips to show it, so we had to tell you instead. We're spoon feeding this story as if it was the Martian. Luckily, I'm a botanist. Of course you're a fucking botanist. NASA knows you're a botanist, who are you talking to? <laughs> Things are finally boiling over on the pitch. Joey Atrofano gets a bit carried away with a shove on Samuel Ab and his <laughs> And it's lucky this didn't happen in a pub. I've spilt water everywhere. Line out, do you jump? Boys, boys, it's our kick. Get up the pitch. Cheadle, 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 Cheats. Fuck them, fuck them. Joey rightly gets a booking for shoving Sammy over, and Sammy gets a booking for being shoved over. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. H must win. Get off him. Anything second now. Ref, we're done. We're done, ref. Despite his protestations, Mark knows there's four full minutes of nerve jangling tension coming up, and there ain't nothing any of us can do about it. And this is how Sky Sports do it. Oh my God, isn't it exciting? Oxford are launching waves of last ditch attacks and the Dorking fans are more nervous than a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> Hot dog, brilliant. Ref, come on! Ref! We're done. Well done, mate. 
Ed, love that. Well done, boys. Right, boys, get sat down. How did he put you? How did he put Sammy as well for that? <laughs> what was yours for? Did he? Did he? Right, this is where it's at for me. Thanks to the five boys that have watched the whole game, not even named. Cheers for Bob and Dan not getting on again. Um, right, Briggs, are we? Um, ah, different type of win today. Uh, not an easy one to get right from the side. But, you know, I think largely, largely we kind of kept them at bay, really. I thought defending was excellent, Dan was good. Not sure they had that many... Yeah, about it really. Listen, it was a difficult one because we, we, we should have been sort of two goals to the good. And it was an ideal change in our shape in that game. Mate, I think before the game, I should have given you a bit more information really because the minute we changed our shape, it meant that they had an overload as H found out the hard way and we had one. And we had to, there was no reason that they should finish the stronger team. None at all. We weren't with 10 men. It's just we wasn't adapting quick enough to that shape. A lot of time, the last time we won a league, we went into a lot of back fours and we look pretty much that redundant every time. But, so we have to work on that because it's, uh, you know, it was the right thing to do because we got the result, uh, but it weren't impressive for the fucking fans, but, which I don't like. But to be fair, first half, I thought actually, you watch that first half back, I think the first half is excellent. I think we restrict them to absolutely nothing except long shit and dead balls. I think the takeout for me is, it's 10 straight victories, yeah? So we can leave that behind now. You know, let's, let's forget that number now. We've got to 10. It's like when you play one of them, you know, like in training, you go, right, 10, 10 games of the goal. We've done that. We need to forget that. And we now need to just really, really work hard. We're asking fullbacks to go high and we're asking to find the overload. It was easy, but we didn't find the overload, boys, right? And I'm not sure you realised you had an overload at the back. So that, if I'm being really candid with you, a team as good as us should have known we have an overload. Where, where, why we're not using it. Does that make sense? They were just splitting. So it was easy, really easy, okay? But we didn't find it. But to be fair, we're sat in at the time and we want to work our way out to win the game and defend it out. And it's a good habit to defend out games. And we've done that a lot. It's a good habit, okay? All right, boys, but well done. Got the result. Great first half and defended it out, okay? Good stuff. Right, management really quick. We had the same overload that they had. Yet yeah, we didn't work it out. So maybe, maybe what we need to do is just maybe just um, just make sure we get them absolutely uh, training and that to say right when you play, you know two four two like that two four five one whatever it might be, overload overload. Do you know what I mean? Like their bloke was doing, their number two is fucking halfway to fucking Leverett, right? And all of a sudden, all it does is open out the overload. So I'm really disappointed from a, from our sort of like shape perspective we didn't have that on key because yeah. another day of the week someone could have put one away yeah. but we've got to win the minute we start complaining about getting wins I was a pack it what's the Ebb fleet they played didn't they I know going performances really we weren't great uh, a bit of tactical warfare really tonight I mean I started off the evening talking about I had a hunch they played differently the team I picked um, wasn't really set up for that but we've done really well against that and then I sort of like went down that stick or twist bit and went to a back four a bit too early. Um, and then as a result of it, we, uh, we had to sort of absorb a lot of pressure because we weren't the best in that formation, but we blocked a few holes and, you know, got over the line. So we've got stuff to work on there. I was, when I come back from Scotland, I went to Mosey and I was playing against Dorkin in the Rhymes South, I think it is, I believe. Um, yeah, played against them, had a good game and Mark signed me that next season. I knew Mark's ambition was to go through the leagues. Um, I didn't think I would be here now, to be fair. Um, but yeah, a bit of both. I wanted to rise back through the leagues. And uh, yeah, I knew that Dorking were an ambitious club and they wanted to go through the leagues themselves. So yeah, it was a perfect fit.
I was actually thinking, yeah, to be fair, I was thinking that a point wouldn't be a, a bad result. I think we've tonight we've had a team that like worked really hard. Sometimes you've got to give credit to the opposition, you know, to stop us, you know, winning and, and scoring goals. You've got to work bloody hard. I thought they worked really, really hard. So you've got to give credit to them for that. But first half, when we watch it back, I thought all the sort of all the phases of the plan patterns were ours. Created lots of chances, got into good areas. Um, and restricted them really. So it's more a case of just, we sat in a back four, made it look a little bit, you know, um, desperate if you like to get the win. I was thinking at the end, oh, they'll see this out and it's not that bad if they draw. And then I thought, oh shit, if the goal goes in, that ruins the run. Ruins Does that the run. Mind on the pitch? It doesn't at all, no, no, it doesn't. Um, when I come off, to be fair, that's one of, one of the things I thought about was uh, the, the 10 straight wins. But when you're on the pitch, no. Don't, don't, don't go through your mind, but it's, it's no fluke. We, I think we've done it in the, the year we did win the league. We sort of went on a 10, 11 game winning run, so it's no fluke. Maybe someone, I don't know, some, some people might claim that what we've done worked because we got the goal, we sat in, but um, I don't know, another day of the week, they had a good possession and you know they might have created better chances another day of the week. I'm probably being a bit harsh there because we got the result. After a week night um, game, can you get to sleep tonight? Not at all, no, no chance, no chance. I'll be up until the early hours. All the caffeine, all the adrenaline running through you, yeah, no chance. What do you do for work? Uh, Raw out. So you've got to be up early? Yeah, five o'clock. So I'll probably have about three hours sleep, max. All worth it though, when you get the points, all worth it. Tunbridge next. Straight onto that, do you celebrate this? No, nah, no. Nah. Literally, Tunbridge, um, and uh, always a tough game. Uh, a team that's, yeah, we're playing a team that's renowned for beating big sides, and they'll see this as a big game. And that's what you saw tonight. Yeah, targets are, for every win, the target's bigger on your back, and players are going to work harder. So we have to do a job, you know. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. This show is completely free. All you have to do to get us to keep making it is hit the like button and leave a comment because that helps us reach more people. Uh, this week's comment of the week comes from Benjamin Landers who says, I reckon you should edit every video at 1am in the morning. Well, Benjamin, we do.